and doesn't connect to sound. Oh, okay, okay. Let's see it here. Hey, Matthew. <clears throat> you there? All right, bro. Um, no, I get beat up by Tom all the time to answer your question. <laughs> but uh, it's actually uh, very important. When I first started MMA, MMA wasn't a thing down here in Michigan. So what you have to do is you have to handicap yourself when you train. So if you have a high advantage, whether it's size or skill level, uh, you just the higher your differential in skill, the worst position you put yourself in to start with the rule. So you're, you're rolling with a brand new white belt, um, smaller than you, have them start in full mount or back control with something sunk in even, and then work your way from there. You can't, you, you, there, you can train with anybody as long as, you know, give them the right head start and you go from there. Does that answer your question a little bit? I'm reading the question now from Matthew. Yeah, just because you get a black belt doesn't make you immune to arm bars and chokes. I mean, you still tap, you know? So what he's saying, what he's saying is that, that like, sometimes if you're, <clears throat> if you're like the black belt in the school and you're not being challenged, if it becomes monotonous or it becomes like boring for you. But I, I think you, you always have to find ways to challenge yourself. All right. So if I know that, if I know that, for example, I'm really good at passing the guard or I'm really good at passing open guard, like, and my student is not very good at playing open guard. I'm not going to just consistently try to like just blow by his open guard. Like I'm going to let him play a little bit of open guard and then I'll let him develop his game a little bit and show him what he's doing wrong. And then who knows, maybe he's eventually going to be able to give me trouble in that position. And then he'll become one of my better training partners down the road, just because I'm taking the time to kind of show him like, Hey, this is what you're doing wrong. This is why I'm blasting past your guard. Um, then before you know it, that same blue belt, is giving me trouble and now it's a new training partner that I have and at that level and I didn't even think you know I have I have white belts that give me trouble passing their guards you know and I, I don't I don't believe that for a second I can't I, I can't, uh, I, I can't. <laughs> my guard's pretty good and I can't stop it <laughs> have, the thing is but when we trained together for a while consistently you easily stopped my guard passing. Like we, we knew each other's game so well, right? Like so, it's like the same uh, thing with your students. I think like your students learn your game. Boo you! Well, Matthew, before we oh, jump, yeah. points, Matthew, there's a great there's a great video of uh, Marcelo Garcia with a blue belt and their nogi, and he's talking about that exact thing. He's he's saying it doesn't matter who you have as a partner and what their ability is you can get a good workout. He's doing this, you know, very dynamic movements and not actually passing or he's passing and then coming back. And so no matter what, and I absolutely agree with these guys because when I first came here, right, I had all white belts, couple blue belts, wasn't really a challenge for me. But the more you give, the more you give, the more you let them sink in chokes, like he was saying, the more you, you know, uh, teach them all of your best stuff so that eventually they beat your best stuff. They're going to eventually, within a year or two, give you a hard time, you know, in, even if it's in particular positions, you know, and then you, you have a, a big uh, group of them. So the, the more you can share what you have with your little brother, if that's who you're with right now, training and things like that, give him all the best tricks, you know, so that he builds up. And within a year, you know, he'll probably give you a hard time or two years, you know, yeah. we have to like invest that time into our, into ourselves by giving to others. I really got to stop watching YouTube then because it's obviously not sinking in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Unfortunately, right now we're limited. Uh, we're limited to our training, uh, you know, avenues. And some of us, all we can do is watch videos. So, um, you know, work, work with what you have. You got to do those mental reps now. Yeah. And now's the time to be doing those mental reps and reading and and trying to get your mind right so that when you come back. You're ready to go, you know. For sure, I just been lifting weights. You look, you look have, here, Tom. Let me see. I don't have really a. You look like <laughs> on some weight. A lot. Really? Yeah, I'm like I was 195 this morning. What are you eating? What are you eating out there, man? It's, yeah, I mean I eat pretty well, but. How's the food out there? Bro, it's all well. I'm not vegetarian like Buyu, so I'm. I, he's gonna give me a hard time. But uh, yeah, man. I mean, lots of lots of protein and veggies. That's mostly what we eat. Buyu, I can't hear you. You're muted. There you go. Oh. 
Always, always, always I'm I'm mute. Hey Joshua, don't worry, I'm gonna I'm gonna choke his ass out when I get there, you know, because I'll be on his back for many years. He doesn't listen to it. That's okay. Chris, you are G, Chris. Jesus Christ, look at you. What's up, Renny? Professor. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here, you know, like trying to do this thing uh, you know, twice a week. Every every week, you know, trying to bring like the best out of the best. In my opinion, both of you guys are, you know, above average. You are very talented skills, you know. I you I mean I don't need that crowd to say that because, you know, when we do our text messages, I always please, I always praise you guys, your jujitsu, you know, your personana. Um, and I'm very happy for you guys to be able to get your time, be here with us, you know. And this is not for me. This is not for Tom and Amir. This is just for everybody, you know. Um, I tell many people, they text me on the sidelines, Professor, can I join your Zoom meeting? I say, sure. I say, oh, but I'm from such a school um, my professor might be don't like it my i said listen man the flag that we carry on that zoom is called jujitsu there's no go squad there's no it's kind of like everybody together give them a little bit like what they know it can be a talk it can be a move it can be a speech you know like we've been having like great people there you know and uh i'm just grateful for you guys being here we have multi-talent skills people, as you can see, Mr. Nacho, working out. Sure. Look at this guy. Man, you are a G, bro, with the rock and roll guitars and look at this guy. I became, Tom, I have to say that no, I'm, I'm, I'm your fan, man. I'm your fan. One day I'm going to bring Josh and Randy to meet you personally, man. It's going to be, a, it's gonna be a, a fireworks in the town. 2021 is going to be a big year. There's going to be a lot of traveling. Yes. Hope so. Yeah, a, lot hope so. Of, a lot of people. We got to go to Colorado. We got to go to Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. We got to go a lot of places. Yeah. Sure, bro. So can we jump on uh, Matthews? If anybody has anything, let's go ahead and get started with questions. If we can finish with Matthews' question. Um, if they're not wanting to roll with you too much, because, of course, you're going to be able to crush them, um, give them positions, like, like Amir was saying, right? Put them on your back. Let them sink in a choke. Get, you know, if it takes 10 steps to get to the move, give them to seven. If they get out, or if you can get out still, give them to eight, give them to nine. If they tap you, great. They're all super stoked. Oh, I got Matthew, right? Fine. They can go brag to everybody. Now, if they get you at seven, you go back down to six or five. You know what I mean? Um, and then that's going to help them get better. It's going to help you get better because, you know, these guys, right? Like all of us, when we're training with people that are not quite as good, you have to let that person work, let them get to a position. And then that's going to help you so that when I do face Josh or Rennie or Amir or Buyu and they get me, right? I've been there before and I've struggled out of that deep position without, without risk, you know? So that's, that, I think that's kind of one of those things where you can help your, your family members that may want to train, but aren't super excited about getting crushed by you, you know, let them, let them get a good position. Right. So, so another thing you can do, Matthew, is like, um, instead of starting out from like a really bad position or, or like giving them the objective of, of finishing a certain position and you escaping, like what I do with a lot of students that are especially <clears throat> like beginning is like, as you're rolling with them, and let's say you do something to advance your position or, to, or you submit them or something like that. Like you right away, you stop, explain to them what it is that they did wrong. And then you go back to the position again and you do it and you, you let them work on the defense. And then you just continue from there. The role continues. And then the next time they run into a position that's difficult, you stop, you show them what it is that they're doing wrong and like that. So you just keep, you let the, the role continue to evolve naturally but you stop momentarily to, you know, to give critique. And, and that, I think that helps a lot, you know, and it also keeps them kind of like motivated because they're rolling you let, and then, you know, it's kind of like on you, how much you want to let the person advance or not, because you are the, the, the higher level uh, grappler. So it's up to you to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm putting too much pressure here, or I'm not putting enough pressure and I'm not challenging them enough. So you need to, you need to find that, that balance with your, Cause right now your brothers are your, are your, your students. You know what I mean? Right now, right? Technically you're home and those, those are your students. So you have to keep them engaged and you have to keep them 
wanting to, to, to train, right? So if you're just constantly smashing them, even if, if you put them in bad positions and you smash them and you just don't give them anything to look forward to, then it's hard for them to get up to want to train jujitsu. So you have to let them win sometimes, right? Like you got to give them victories. You can't just smash them. You got to give, you got to give them victories. Hopefully that answered the question. I just let people pass my guard, get the side control on me, you know, and start working from there. <laughs> By the way, Tom, I saw you had your friend from Australia and he was doing a very similar, you know, he did the same move, the, the bass, bass root and compression, and he had a very similar uh, role from bottom side. So it was really cool. Uh, really cool to see it all the way over there. Yeah, he, he showed that move because that became one of his most popular, even though he has countless videos on YouTube that become one of his most popular uh, YouTube videos is because that Kaskatami, uh, he does it so well. And he's now like, he's a monster, you know, he's 220 muscle guy and he's very, very good, very well spoken, articulate. And, uh, you know, his, his Jiu Jitsu is really good. He was able, actually able out here uh, a year ago and he was supposed to be here for a seminar at that, like the week before he taught on here. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's really good at that. And so it's, it's awesome that he, he knows that, that move. Cause even when I do it to people, they're like, what, where'd that come from? So that's cool. All right, guys, I don't know if you want to get started. I mean, we basically had in mind um, showing basically some, some of the solo drills that we've been doing to kind of try to stay active. Um, you know, not everybody has training partners. So Matthew, you know, take care of your brother. So that way they, they enjoy this and they want to train with you. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of drills that we can do on our own, at least to even just break a sweat and, you know, keep in shape, keep our cardio. Um, you know, thanks to, uh, thanks to Professor Buyu, we made a dummy too using the towel, using a pillow, and you know. Then afterwards I went on YouTube and, and kind of added a little bit and I saw Lazaro did a really nice one too. So, you know, in limited times, just try to get your, your training in as much as you can. You know, if you were training every day at 7.30 p.m., then hey, make it a habit to still train at 7.30 in your house. Even if it's not a full hour, even if you don't get all the rounds, try to stay consistent and try to, to get some work in. So hopefully we can show you some drills um, you know, we could do a little bit of the solo drills and then really we could cover a lot of the technique that we wanted to cover. We wanted to play some spider and lasso just because that's the kind of the game we like to play. But um, it's up to you guys. You guys let us know if you want to see the solo drills first or if we should go straight into technique. I mean, it's totally up to you guys. Whatever, whatever you guys want to start off, like I think everybody that's watching, they're going to be very, very glad, you know? Okay. So I think since nobody's doing... I think nobody's doing the actual drill. Yeah, technique. Okay. Here, let's show you. Let's start here. Let's do a drill of a lasso slider. Yeah. You guys, look. I'm going to show it first with uh, Professor Josh, and then afterwards, if you build yourself a dummy, you can do very similar techniques as well. But just basically going into entries, you know, getting your double spider grips. You know, opening your guard, shrimping, getting your knees, flaring, and gaining control. So that way we have, you know, uh, not only breaking down posture, but also gaining some control of our partner. Okay, from here, a lot of the drills that we've been doing is repetitive, but man, you know, that's, that's where we feel we get better. Even if it's just turning, you know, and shrimping, right? Or shrimping in, getting our other side. Maybe activating our, activating our lasso as well and our spider. And then just playing around from here, okay? You know, we can go starting basic, maybe going into like our number one suite. So removing our lasso and then now using our spider to help us get on top. And it's all about repetition, you know? Like um, one thing that I really like about like traditional judo is that those guys will practice 100 entry, uh, entries, you know, or 10 entries, one takedown, 10 entries, one takedown, and just repeat, 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 and clean up. So, taking it down here. Flaring, okay. If you're having trouble getting here, then maybe there's something wrong. So, maybe we should repeat it again. Going back. Jesus. This camera. 
really focus on your grips here with the spider, circling in, make, making sure we have a strong grip control. Okay, and then me, I particularly like a lot of the lasso. It just makes one extra step for the person to have to deal with when we're talking about passing the guard. Okay. Going in, removing. And the one sweep there. Obviously, we have the arm. Obviously, drilling entries. If you give me a second, let me get my little man made dummy. This one didn't cost too much, just a hoodie and some towels and some pillows. Yeah. And obviously, you have to use your imagination a little bit with this. Coming in. Get into your lasso, spider. Even if you just have a gi, just use the gi top. We'll switch, you know, switching to the other side. Work with what you have right now, okay, guys? So just try to do the best you can with what you have. I got Josh, so that actually, you know, helps a little bit. Okay. Here. Obviously, lasso a lot of times, you know, activating the spider or maybe forcing like a half guard so we can work into you know, bumping up, like doing bump sweeps and things like that. But it's really a game of just keeping your partner in your control. Remember, in order to have a good guard, you have to have good control. So if I can wrap my leg around, activate my spider and my lasso, then it's gonna be hard for him to escape this type of guard, this type of entanglement. Okay, guys? Just pause there for a second. Just make sure anybody have any questions on, on that part of the technique. Oh, Matthew. Looks like Matthew's actually trying the technique. You got a dummy there? Yeah. Can you, can you go through maybe the details of like how deep you put your foot, where you put your foot on the back, the, the pull and turn and elbow? You know, we have a big dif a discrepancy in level uh, watching here. So maybe go through some details and, and exactly how you get to that position because I know you guys are super good at it and maybe there's stuff that I'm missing. Yeah, so um, a couple of details and like also some like, I wouldn't say innovations, but I would say some like updates to the, t to the positions that I'm going to go over a little on, on my side, like some things that I've, I've recently come across. So um, like basic, very basic way of getting into the lasso. Okay, like is in... I feel like in jiu-jitsu, one of the things that, that we, we learn how to do, but we don't often tell each other or describe is how to move to shrimp without, without putting my feet on the mat. So if I can put, if I can shrimp to the side like this, right? My hips side to side without putting my feet on the mat, that keeps some good control without having to, without me having to put my feet on the mat and, and risking him jumping over my guard. So when I have the closed guard, I get the double sleeve control and then I do that movement without putting my feet on the mat, I shrimp. And now I'm bringing my shin across his body, okay? And then the other leg is pinching the hips. So I'm creating a V shape here. I'm creating this shape and his hips are in between this space here, yeah? So I can go from there, you have avenues of going to your scissor sweep, right? It's a perfect setup for you to start going into your scissor sweep. But if you want to start setting up your, your lasso or your open guard game, it's also a good opportunity. So once you shrimp and you own this inside space here, you need to flare the knee to make sure that you start creating a frame on that arm, one, <clears throat> and bring the other knee across the shin, uh, across the uh, upper body as well. And then you flare that leg too to create the second frame, two. So this position here is super strong, this uh, frame position, right? Once I... I close my elbows and turn my palms up. I have a very strong position, right? Flaring the, flaring my, my knees, okay? From here, I can go into many positions, right? But if we're trying to get into the lasso, we have to do that shrimp out, right? Where I shrimp out like this, and if you notice, I pull the sleeves to where it makes his body kind of like Superman here, okay? With the foot on the hip here, on the right foot, I keep distance, and now I can swing and bring that leg around, and I like to lasso Tom, 
Speaking of that detail, turn us around. The other way. You see the back, the other way. So I like to I like to hook right behind the the right behind the the shoulder, but I like to be able to move my knee because I feel like if once I I lock my leg here, if I go for that deep lasso, move us over this way a little bit more. If I go for the deep lasso like this, I feel like I lock myself in here. If I lock my leg, okay. So when I bring it out, I can put more, I can pull, I can pull this sleeve, yeah, pull it towards me, and I can put more tension on his arm here. Yeah, you see, so that's how I play, play my lasso like that, with that, like that open flared knee lasso. Traditional lasso, I think is like, like this, you see. I, I wouldn't say that that is the, I wouldn't say that that's wrong to play that deep traditional lasso. I like that lasso as well. But for me, for my game, I find that it's better to have the shallow lasso. And then more recently, what I've been seeing, I've saw, uh, seen uh, guys like Felipe Costa that have been uh, updating the lasso game a little bit. And what they do is, instead of putting the lasso underneath the arm, they put the foot right on the shoulder. You know, so it's um, like this. So I, I'll, get to, I'll get to the position the same way, but instead of going into a lasso, I was just gonna go into foot on the shoulder. So I'll shrimp create the frame, create the frame, and then I'm gonna shrimp out one more time, and I just put the foot right here, like this, yeah? So now, as kind of doesn't feel, it doesn't feel as secure at first, if you're used to playing lasso, because it's not tying up your opponent behind the arm, but it's really good at keeping distance, okay? And then it, it's really good for allowing you to transition from guard to guard, okay? I think too, like, Within the different lassos, they all have uh, different functions. You know, if you have a deep lasso and you can get all the way to the back, you can use it to break down posture. As opposed to if you have like a shallow lasso, which can be a little bit more, uh, you can be a little bit more aggressive to sweep. You. Maybe you can't pull them, you can't really control the posture. So there's not, you know, there's no wrong or right way. It's just they all have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, do you do you guys with that shallow lasso? Do you use that shallowness? You, you have to like, I guess, use your arm quite a bit more, but do you use that to be able to take your foot out if you need to? All right. Uh, Especially yeah. if you're on the shoulder. Like if, if they're, you know, if you're really worried about having to take your foot out, yeah. the foot's on the shoulder, it's a short distance for so, you to travel. So just to give you some ideas, so some idea of, of how I utilize the, the shallow, the shallow lap, right? Is, um, like, most of the time, you're going to be using the shallow lasso for guys that are passing like very dynamic passers that pass standing up side to side passing. So you put the foot here and then I go for the cross collar grip. So when you, let's say I get to my lasso here, I go here, one, two, I shrimp out and I, I put the foot on the shoulder. Now the other, the other hand, I let go and I go for the cross collar grip like this. So, turn on. so if you look, I have this foot on the shoulder like this and the cross collar grip, right? And now I put the other foot on the other shoulder, like this, okay? Now, the only thing I need to be careful of here is that my feet don't go too high because then he'll stack me, right? So I'm digging my heels down like this and I'm, and I'm putting pressure downward here, yeah? It, and I'm pulling him towards me with the, with, the, with the collar, right? So he's connected to me. Once he's connected to me, stand up, right? Move, move. Yeah, back up. Okay, move forward. Right, so I'm waiting for him to give me the pressure that I need, which is the forward pressure. And then all I have to do is release the foot from the shoulder, lift my hips as I pull, pull the sleeve into the pocket and use this foot on the shoulder to rotate. Right, now I can hook. Right, so I use that position like, it, it's very frustrating once you get a good grip of put, put the foot on the shoulder. And then eventually they start to put pressure like this and you separate the elbow from the, from the knee and get the omoplata. So, yeah, I, I, really like, I really like the foot on the shoulder, foot on the hip position because, and then if I can pull anything, it's hard for them, especially against bigger people to come forward. But that, that shallow lasso is interesting because I never really thought of it like that, I guess. Um, I thought of them as two separate things. So that's pretty cool. 
if you play collar sleeve, like let's say you play this game, right? Like we stand up. See how the foot's on the the foot's on the shoulder and the foot's on the. So this is like a, this is collar sleeve, right? That's what this is what they call a collar sleeve. Yeah. Um, all there's there's a small avenue to get to this shallow lasso. It's just right here. So now you're playing this shallow lasso game, you know. And now here it's very simple to lift the hips. Oh, applause. Yeah. Well, it's, for me, it's a, very, it's a very good game if I'm not too, if maybe I'm not feeling confident in my grips that day or so. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I see a ton of setups from that for sweeps, for triangles, for omoplatas, for all sorts of stuff, depending on what they do. So that's, that's a fantastic little setup. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Nacho, Nacho loves it. Professor like, Joshua, we have a minute for a question. Stuff. Well, I'm sorry, go ahead. Joshua, do you keep, uh, you know, for everybody, do you keep that pressure on the collar the whole entire time to focus on that grip? You make 50-50 grip on the sleeve and on the collar, or you kind of like already focus on the pulling on the sleeve already, and the collar is just going to be like, you know, just to be there in case you need to attack. The, the thing is, Buyu, I think, like, I uh, – we, we have to re, we have to learn like when when we start learning you, you know like when we get into certain positions like you have to feel the position like you have to get the, the repetitions but for me i'm using the the collar is to pull him into the leg oh right like the, i pull him in into my leg but the leg doesn't kick away because if you kick away then you're gonna you're gonna kick away from your own from your own grip I yeah know. so i pull the the collar into the leg and then the sleeve too. So I'm pulling him to me and then the leg just stays strong, you know? Instead of kicking, if you kick away with the leg, then now you, you're, you're doing against your own, your own force for no reason. Yeah, because the lasso, like for instance, for myself speaking, like that's something that I learned from the, I would say like from the years past, not like from the old, the old time was more like spider guard, you know what I mean? Like, like you said, you 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 watch Felipe Costa. Felipe Costa is a great mm -hmm. uh, uh, rooster weight. You know, like very technical, uh, good person as well. But back in, back then, like the main thing was like playing spider guard, right? And then I, I believe like a couple of years back, the lasso came to like you know people that might be can have not long legs to be able to keep that person far away but to kind of like maintain the person next to you. So that's something that, uh, you know, uh, I think it's a very informative to everyone. It's just like your thoughts, your perspective, your feeling, yeah. the grip on the collar, the grip on the sleeve and the leg on the lasso, you know, like, and that's have preferences, you know, that's, that's a good point actually, you know, it's a good to people know that as well, but that's a great point. And I think it's also, you know, being able to, uh, I think one of the things, like like you were saying, I think I, I, there was a time where it was uh, spider guard, and then it was lasso, and then we see barambolo, and then we see. But now I think now I think we're going back to closed guard. I think closed guard is the new uh, uh, wave. Yeah, close. If you can, I think if you can if you can get to closed guard in competition today, you should be able to to finalize the match by points or by submission. I, 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 feel, that's, I feel that strongly. And I think that you're going to start seeing that um, a lot now in tournaments. Yeah, well, you see, go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 go ahead, sir. Uh, is this, do you feel like, because I see that in MMA over the years, you know, striker and then wrestler and then jiu-jitsu and then striker, wrestler, jiu-jitsu. Yeah. So do you feel like it's a rock, paper, scissor thing and it's just the next evolution of, all right, people are spending too much time playing open guard, passing or leg locks. And so now they're just going to lock you back in and go super old school, all the basic fundamental stuff. And that's what's going to beat the new stuff. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like right now. And if, and if I really like start to think about it for me, that's where I have the, the most trouble. I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I'm in somebody's closed guard, if, even in, in tournaments, when I get submitted, I usually get submitted from people's closed guard. I usually get triangled from somebody's closed guard. That's like my, my kryptonite, you know? Good to know. Uh, Pay attention to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that position to start with. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Professor Josh, 
but you know, like, so even I know from experience that closed guard is a very, very tough position. I know we can all, we can all agree on that. But, um, but, but I've seen it, you know, and when I end up in somebody's closed guard, I'm like, oh man, here we go. Awesome. Professor Rennie and Professor Josh, we have one more question from Max. If you don't mind, can we pause for a minute? Sure. All right. Max is asking, when you abandon the lasso guard, do you put the foot on your opponent's shoulder for the sweep? Okay. So, um, when you abandon the lasso guard, you put, do you put your foot? So I'm going to show you the technique because I'm not sure exactly what the details he's asking me because you do take your foot, you do take your foot off the, off the, the hip or sorry, off the shoulder. So stand up right now. Let's say he's here. Yeah. Can you uh, turn this around so you can see my feet? So look, my feet, I have one foot on the shoulder, the other foot on the shoulder. Remember what I said about not having the feet too high like this, because then he can easily come underneath, stack, push, push one leg, boom and start passing like that. And I don't want that, okay? So remember, I have the, the collar grip and the sleeve grip. I'm pulling this, the collar into my leg. This leg here is putting a little bit of counter pressure so that I can make his body turn at an angle, right? This is what I want. I don't want him straight like this, putting, putting all his weight like this. I want one shoulder away and the shoulder of the sleeve that I'm controlling closer to me. So when I'm ready to alleviate this pressure, I'm gonna take the foot off of the shoulder and I'm gonna make him fall into the hole. Look how he falls. So look, he's putting pressure here. I'm gonna take that foot out of there and I'm gonna let him fall into this gap. You see that? When he falls into the gap, now my leg is behind his shoulder. So I need to use this foot on his shoulder to help me rotate. And then of course, I need to make sure that I keep the arm and that I'm blocking the hip, right? Then from here, we have to work our omoplata. I have to get out, I have to sit up, and I have to start trying to, to finish, okay? I got those details from Booyu, by the way. Ah, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Guys, so, I, think, I think that's also a benefit of that shallow lasso. Like, if you lock yourself in with a deep lasso, yeah, maybe when you're trying to get out, like, go ahead, go deep lasso here. Maybe if you're trying to circle this out now, all the way, then you can start looking to a pass, right? But when you have that foot here on the shoulder or even just a, sh a shallow vessel, you know, you still maintain control. Ah. So. That's a great detail, by the way, right there. Here, which again, maybe if he's trying, if he's trying to stand up, maybe I want to bring him down. Yeah. But if he's already down, Right, I don't want to make like a big circle to where now my guard is exposed and open. He can pass. This foot on the shoulder helps with that. Here, and then anytime if we have to reset, you know, okay, go back to the foot and the hip. Go back to your, you know, collar sleeve guard. From here, bring them down. Attack triangles. You know, depends. Perfect. Josh and I always have a debate on what's better, triangle or plata. He likes omoplatas. I like triangles, but it's all based on your game. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Nathan's asking one more question, if you don't mind. Of course. Um, he's asking, can the opponent um, sit back into an ankle lock in that position? And if so, what should he do to avoid that? From lasso? Yeah, so from, um, from lasso, if you're playing a regular lasso, right, I'm controlling the sleeve, yeah? So if I'm playing a regular, uh, let's say I'm playing a deep lasso, turn this around. Where my foot is behind his, if Rennie sits back for a, for a foot lock right here, okay, I'm gonna make sure that I can keep that sleeve. Let's come back this way. I keep the sleeve, okay. The foot that was on the foot that was on the shoulder comes back in between his legs so that I can start to stand up. Right, and now here I have all of my weight back on my foot. He's not gonna leg lock me because my, my weight is on that leg. And then I'm gonna try to bring that knee down. Hold on, let me turn this around. Uh, like awesome. this. So that he's still wrapping around. I'm just gonna try to scoop my hips back and put my knee to the ground. Perfect. Okay. So, so controlling that sleeve grip really makes it that much harder for him to fall back for an ankle lock. Because remember, he needs to do, if his hand is here like this, right? Um, Drop my leg. Sit back. So, <clears throat> in order to finish the in order to finish the leg lock, right? He needs to curl his arm up. He needs to do up like this. If I'm pulling his sleeve like this, 
Move over your sleeve. Look where his hand is. Everybody, do you see where his hand is? How, how low it is? He needs his hand to be up here. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go so you can see where his hand goes. Look how, where his hand goes. So I'm controlling the sleeve, and I have a very strong pull that as he sits back, he should pull me up. Now I'm not worried about the leg lock anymore. Beautiful. Yeah, I think, I think it's a little bit hard to um, get leg lock there once you have that. Because as soon as you come up, put the foot on the mat, then ankle lock is not going to be very effective. The problem with a lot of, a lot of people playing when they're playing guard and they get foot lock is they, let, they abandon all of the grips. And they just start trying to defend the leg. But the thing is, if somebody has your foot wrapped and you're holding on to their sleeve, they can't connect the other hand to finish the, the foot lock. So as long as you've got the sleeve, <clears throat> I'm confident that I, I can defend it. Yeah. yeah. Also, just another detail on that. You shouldn't be getting foot locks or you shouldn't be in that much danger if you're playing the foot on the shoulder. Okay? Because my feet are not under his armpits here. Yeah? So my feet are always above. If I feel him that he's... <clears throat> if I feel that he's trying to push my legs down, I, I go through... I kick through and I go back over the top. So push it down. I go through and over the top. Right? If he, if he tries to hug it, hug it. Boom. Here, I push it through. Right? I'm always pummeling the legs. Just the same way that we pummel for underhooks here. The same way that we pummel for underhooks. You pummel with your legs as well. Inside, same way. All right, always pumping with legs. Oh, perfect. Does it answer your question, Nathan? Great, awesome. We do have one more question, but we'll, we'll save this one for the solo drills. Uh, they're asking if you have any good exercises for grip strength, and we can address that when we get to your solo section. Thank you, Professor. Guys, make sure, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that we can, you know, review on the internet. Obviously, you know, always be selective on who you're studying. So we make sure we study proper technique. But uh, Danaher came out with a great video with a bunch of solo drills. Um, there's a lot of guys that, you know, you can research. Obviously the solo drills that we've been doing has been more for like fitness, you know, trying to all keep motion. If we're talking mobility. about, yeah, mobility, we're talking about standing up, you know, if we're talking about rolls, shrimps, you know, a lot of those things, it's just so we, you know, we stay active. You know, obviously everybody went from training, you know, five, six times a week or four times a week, whatever you were training, to now not being able to train with a group. So we're just trying to emulate those type of motions, whether it's just a shrimp in place where we keep our hips off the mat, right? Simple things like that. It's just to keep our mobility so when we do come back, because, you know, we know this is eventually going to end and we're going to be able to get back to training, you know, we're not as rusty as if we just stopped training altogether. Okay, but I mean, grip strength, I mean. Yeah, one thing that, helps, that has helped me with grip strength, um, it's not really a solo drill, but it's just exercises that help me with grip strength, is uh, deadlifts definitely help me with, with my grip strength. Um, also, farmer's walks, you know, this is obviously weighted um, with weights. Uh, farmer's walks, and if you don't have access to weights, in my opinion, the best uh, uh, exercise for grip strength is pull-ups. Pull-ups with a gi, I know that that's like a cliche thing to say, like everybody's going to tell you do grab a gi and do pull-ups, but it, it, there's a reason for it and it's because it really works. And if it's not challenging enough for you, try doing it with spider guard grips. Get a gi, throw it over the top and hold on to the sleeves like this, like, a, like you're playing spider guard and tell me if it's easy. And when, if you can do that, then your grips are strong. All right. So you start off with the lapels. I'll start off with the lapels, doing it with the lapels. Then I hold on to the back of the, of the sleeve like this. And then I'll do this one. So you, you make, this is, this is easy, intermediate, hard. <laughs> Hope that answers the question there. Yeah, and by the way, I think like we didn't do the solo drills just because we, it, it didn't look like anybody was uh, like, was gonna be doing them along with us. So we just want to get into technique because we feel, figured it would be more productive. Do you, uh, I, you guys still use, I know you're, you're saying close guard is the thing nowadays. Do you, is that what your go-to now? Or are you still going to lassos and open and stuff like that a lot? Or what do you two guys, 
I know you kind of, you have each other uh, now at least. Are you guys able, or even before this, is that, is that a, a change in what you've been working on? Well, I think, I think the close guard is just a better place to start. You know, for me, like there was a time that I was like half guard, half guard, but then you, you start in half guard and now you've already skipped so many of your guards. But if we can start from close guard, if we want to go into spider or lasso, you can go from there. You get me? So I, like sometimes, you know, at least when I first started, close guard was a big part of my game because sometimes people would get frustrated. You know, if you're competing and you have a strong close guard and they can't open, they start getting frustrated, putting arms inside, making mistakes, then you can attack arms, attack triangles. But I think it's just probably a better place to start and then go into the rest of your guards as opposed to just going from say like a half guard to where now, you know, it's going to be a little bit harder to get into to that spider game or getting to back into the close guard. So, I mean, I, I just think it's for a reference point, it's probably a safe place to start. Zoomception. Zoomception. Matthew was showing us Zoomception. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for, for, if you're thinking that if you're, if you're trying to give your partner the hardest time in passing your guard, it, it's only uh, common sense to think that you would want to start from your close guard because it would, it's adding layers that they need to pass, right? So he's got to now pass. He's got to open my guard. He's got to engage my, my open guard. And, and it transitions to whatever that's going to transition to. Um, and so, you know, it's just adding another layer. And so I, it would be, you would be remiss if you didn't, if you didn't use all of the weapons in your toolbox, like, you know what I mean? Like uh, it's only, it's only like strategically thinking. Do you guys have favorite? Uh, I hope I'm not getting too off track for what you had planned, but do you guys have favorite attacks from close guard? Do you use rubber guard? Do you use just basic stuff that we teach? I know all of us, right? Once we get brown and black belt, we go all the way back to white belt and do white belt stuff. Okay. Look at Hodger Gracie's match with Bushesha, right? That's all I do from close guard. I do this like, this like arm, this, this two on one, like this like two on one, dragging it across and like coming up and taking the back like that. It's beautiful. It's Love butter. it. Butter. Love it. Love I it. Saw Hodger, I saw Hodger do it to Bushesha and Bushesha had like no answer for it. Yeah. You know? And and, okay, so so since that's your go-to, do you mind showing us a quick thing? Do yeah, you? Yeah. Do, I use that a lot. I lift my hips to pop through. Can you guys maybe show these guys? Yeah, I just want to see if I can get a um, a good angle of it. Hold on. So I I grab this cross call this cross grip like this. So I reach across and I do the hook grip, and then the other one comes underneath the the elbow like. Mm -hmm not under the elbow, over the top of the elbow, behind the tricep. Then you got to do your little hip bump, right? So that you can create that space here so that you can drag the arm across. Yeah? Once you drag the arm across here, then you need to keep punching. The whole thing is to turn your knuckles out and then keep punching it. I like to punch it like across and up towards, his, towards, his, towards the sky. Then I, I unlock and I come up to my elbow here and I switch and I start reaching over the top. And now from here, we have different transitions. You can pull him and go to take the back. You know, um, you can sweep. Most of the time I'm looking to take the back there. I'm, I'm gonna drag him like that. But my detail is I grab that sleeve and once I drag it across, my knuckle goes like this and it turns into a stiff arm, you know? So that's really my, um, that's really like my primary attack right now from that closed guard position. Hey, can you turn the AC on? Yeah. Hold on. I think I, my assistant yeah. can you turn on the air conditioner. Hot in here. For, for everybody, that's, that's really hard to come back from. Once your, once your elbow has crossed midline, that's hard to come back from. So it's such a strong position, is that, especially if you're doing what you're saying about punching that arm across. And that's one of the things that, that I was talking about regarding the closed guard is that some of, sometimes there's certain things from the closed guard where once you're you're there, it's over. It's pretty much game over. Um, and um, and most guys don't know how to defend it because they don't spend any time in the closed guard. Especially in training, training we start we start from open guard. Everybody wants to everybody wants to pass Toriando, you know, right off the bat. So that's why I feel like you got you got to hunt for that closed guard in training. 
Yeah, I remember. I remember at maybe Blue Belt um, when that shift kind of changed, uh, and Spider Guard became a thing. Mm. Um, and and I remember even during training, people would give like the professor even would give everybody a hard time if you would just stay in close guard. You're like, you're not letting them work. You're not letting them work and things like that. So now it's interesting to see this, this come back around. Yeah, because you could see how maybe um, it, could, it could be like the other person can get bored or think that you're stalling because you're trying to keep them in close guard. But in reality, it's part of the game and it's a big part of jujitsu. It's a big, in my opinion, it's a, it's, it's, it's a dominant position. Especially, I think, if you're in talking the sport, about – In sport jiu-jitsu. Yeah, if you're talking about points, yeah. you score a few points, you know, you'll see this, not just with close guards. Sometimes we're like guys that play warm guards or kind of those type of guards where you lock them in. You know, if you have a few points, some advantages, you can pull into your close guard and kind of control from there. You know, it's, it's like Professor Josh was saying, now you just have a lot more layers that you have to get through. And then if at any time your last one's giving you trouble, you can reset going back to that close guard too. So, I mean – at least for me, like, close guard just gives me a lot more options to get to work. You know, obviously, we're trying to circle here. I mean, we can, you asked about rubber guard. I mean, yeah, we can play some rubber guard as well, too. But I, using the collar, sleeve, breaking down postures, even if I open, right, I'm here using the foot. If I try my triangle and it fails, we can come back to a reset position. Okay, and then now, you know, we just keep going, sometimes frustrating our opponent to where he makes a mistake and then we can capitalize from that. But it's just having that option of going into this reset spot. There's some guys in competitions who do like body triangles in close guard, you know, where like now he's really trapped in here. Okay, and it's just more and more steps for your opponent to have to deal with. Do you, uh, do you feel like, you, do you still use close guard against guys that are much bigger than you? I know you guys have several of those guys there. Or do you go back to your bread and butter lasso open guard stuff? That's a good question. I, I usually don't. I got injured playing close guard against somebody who was a little bit heavier than me. And it was my fault because I got stacked and, and I, I did like a crazy movement. But ever since then, I don't play close guard against people who are, who are like heavier than me. I'll play open guard. And I kind of – because I don't want – I want to always have the ability to where if I'm getting stacked to be able to push away and disengage. Yeah, that's, that's how I feel about it. Because I have a bum knee and both now, kind of. And so when I close my guard on big, strong guys, and they try to force it open, it kind of – it's not a good feeling on my knees. So I prefer to play half guard or open on those big, strong guys. Yeah, it's just it, – it, um, I feel like always having the ability to bail is, is important, you know, and, and being able to, to switch to a different guard or create space – and I think that once you're in the closed guard, it's, a, it's great for control and keeping the fight close, right? And I don't know if you want that closeness with uh, 225 plus. Maybe not for you, Tom, maybe it's 250 plus now. <laughs> you're, like, well, you're like 200 now. Man, I, Almost. I feel like me, you know, the bigger guys is, is, you know, really strong. Having that ability to push away with the knee, having the ability to bring your feet to the hips and then push away from the hips if you need to. Um, definitely the strategy could be a little bit different depending on body type. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to be a, if you're going to be a guard player, you need to be able to, um, you need to have strong legs. That's for sure. You need to use your, you need to use your legs and because there's no such thing as a, as a, a guard where you're using your arms to, to maintain retention, you know? I think that's where the lasso guard helps a lot in that game because, you know, if you're holding someone around the waist, as opposed to if you're just locking, you know, their arms and controlling their shoulders. I think that's, you know, at least for me with bigger guys, it's a, it's a safer guard to play. And then going back, like, we're, we're here. All right, going in, making sure we have strong frames, getting the lasso. If he's, if he's pulling back, then I use a deep lasso. If I want to start using it to sweep, maybe it's like a bump sweep, right? I have to be a little bit shallower. It's going to be hard to bump sweep if I have a deep lasso here. Um, a lot of times, too, kind of forcing the half guard, but getting him to step. There you go. Getting him to step, obviously not all the way over the knee. If he comes over the knee, then, you know, it's going to be a little bit harder for us to use our leverage or to create leverage with our hips. 
for keeping this knee out. And at any time, you know, if he's putting too much weight and we have to bail on the lasso, then we just tie in right to knee shield or attacking the arm, going for like omoplatas and stuff. So, I mean, it's, you have to, to be a good guard player, you know, you have to have a few, you have to be able to cycle within your different guards and then give them different, you know, uh, reactions or, or expecting different reactions from your partner. Can you go back into that uh, initial position you had real quick? I just wanted to make sure that something didn't get passed over. Um, so for anybody that may be lower, I don't know, everybody watching, uh, but if you can see the biggest thing for me in particular is the fact that no matter if he has his foot on the hip or the foot underneath, he has to control the shoulder and the hip, right? So I think if he, and what he was describing is if Josh is able to step past that to where he can then move his hip, he's losing, right? Mm -hmm. So, so this is, this is something that maybe goes unnoticed by a lot of people is that the control in this position, whether it's your foot or your shin or your knee controlling the hip and the shoulder, right? Because those two pieces are, are the biggest, especially with gravity on Josh's side there are going to be the biggest pressure for the bottom guy. So, so I, if you're, if you're any white or blue belts, maybe in here, if you can kind of, whatever position you're in, pay attention to the shoulder and hip of the top guy, it's going to give you a huge advantage. So that's, that's fantastic. If, Cause if he's going to try to pass, he's going to try to smash. I mean, if he can, if he can get this and uh, cross face and start smashing me here, obviously, you know, for higher belts, we have, you know, our calf slice, uh, our bicep slicer here rather, but maybe for the lower belts, right? We don't want this. This is not good here in the lasso. So we need to make sure that we control that shoulder. That's where this foot is very helpful. If he's trying to put his weight down on me, right? Putting the foot in the shoulder helps me at least keep him away. Sometimes too, like if we're doing like a, you know, a bump sweep from lasso, a lot of times people think you have to grab the leg. You really don't. Like as I'm looking to grab the leg, maybe he moves the leg back to the fin. And we use that time to try to attack kind of use it as a little surprise attack. So, but you definitely don't want a lot of shoulder pressure. We definitely don't want them cross-facing because then, you know, the last one's not going to be as effective on, at that point. That was awesome. A little side note, guys, real quick, just something that uh, is kind of like off topic here from, the, from side control, or it's not from side control, from uh, knee shield. Something that like I've been really thinking about lately that's hel been, that has helped me out and um, from the top or the bottom is, um, last one. Whether I'm in the lasso here or whether I'm not in the lasso, this arm right here is so important in the pass, right? If I win this this battle with this hand, right, meaning if I can gain inside control on his collar, or if I could get a cross face and control his head, I'm going to pass his guard. I know that I can pass his guard. If Rennie can successfully control this hand by either stuffing it down in between my legs and keeping it down like that, or just controlling my sleeve and, and pulling it towards him, like keeping it good control of my sleeve, then he's, his chances of sweeping me go up exponentially, okay? So a lot of, a lot of us, we, we get caught up in this part of the battle here, and then we forget about this arm and this, this arm. So there's like, when we're playing guard, there's four battles going on. This hand's fighting this, this hand, this foot's, this uh, leg is fighting that leg. So right, each, each individual limb is fighting its own battle. It can't just be doing nothing. So this limb here, it has to fight this limb, you know? So a lot of people overlook that. He should be looking to stuff this arm or control. Yeah. Very simple for him to sweep me once he controls the other arm. So we overlook that a lot. That's a very important detail. Love it. Love it. Good stuff. Awesome. Yeah, guys. I mean, if you have any other questions on there, on, on lasso or, or, you know, any other, any other parts, um, you know, again, that whole lasso also works. See, when we were talking about the evolution, you know, we're talking about spider. A lot of people, you know, are using spider from the knees. Double spider used to be very popular, but then as people started figuring out that, hey, you know, we have to stand up. One person, you get your partner to start standing up. Now the double spider, especially if you can get underneath me, right, he's going to stack and pass. And I think that's when the lasso started really, you know, becoming important. But get my lasso, get my spider, and now you have to use two different forms to attack, right? 
you're gonna have to engage the spider or engage the lasso. You can't come underneath if we have this control, right? And then you can't just stack. Yeah. So that's where, like, you know, what we're talking about. Um, adding layers. Yeah, adding layers, and then also you gotta expect your opponent not just stay on, just to stay on their knees. They're gonna try to stand up. It's a natural reaction for you to try to stand up, whether to back away or to try to stack and pass your guard. So I think that's why, like, that whole combination has become more popular of the, having both, having that tool, having the spider on one side, having the lasso on the other. I love that stuff, guys. I appreciate that a lot. Good, good, man. And then, I mean, you can get creative. You can, you know, sometimes you get a lasso, right? And then he starts passing here. You can make a little X here with your lasso, right? Getting underneath, just using it to load up. You know, again, it's just another little step that he's going to have to deal with. So, I mean, it's just, you know, playing around, seeing, you know, this game is maybe it's not for everybody, right? But seeing what works. Just like when we go to class, sometimes we, we drill a move and we say, oh, maybe this is not for me, but sometimes you're going to pick something that's going to work for your particular body type. If you have shorter legs, maybe getting a, a, a shallow lasso is better for you. If you have longer legs and you, you find that there's a lot of trouble with people standing up and backing away, maybe the deep lasso pulling in is what you really want to do. So don't just be limited, I mean, to, to one style or one game, you know, find out what works best for your body. I, I agree with that 100%. I, I'm a big advocate of trying to be an encyclopedia of jiu-jitsu, if you would, just because even if it's something I don't personally use, not only do I need to teach it to somebody later, but I may face it, right? I may come across it and that person's like exceptional at it. I at least have to be familiar with it. So I, I think that's for everybody. Even if, if you ever go to class, you're like, ah, crap, we're doing this move this week. This is stupid. I'll never use this, right? It's still important because you're going to face somebody someday that has that and they're really good at that thing. So we need to be good at all those things as much as we can. Can't wait to, um, to go up to Colorado and spend the week up there exchanging little tricks that we've picked Bro. up. Bro, yeah, it's going to be awesome. We'll take you on some uh, – Amir calls them forced marches, but we call them hikes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's beautiful, man. I wish I could turn my, my thing around here, but the, it's, it's very nice out right now. Yeah, man, when this is over, you got to come, bro. It's been three years. Anybody else have any questions before we bail on this class for the day? That was awesome, guys. Thank you so much. That was a good one, Joshua and Randy. Very, very nice. Very technical, like you guys are always, you know. And I think it's a very informative for everybody that's here. Uh, know these tricks and grips and foots, you know, and adapt. You have to adapt. The same as we're doing right now. Like everybody's going, uh, maybe the same, maybe half, maybe more on the boat. But uh, we have to adapt ourselves, and that's what we do. Like we learn new tricks. We put new tricks on the game. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu is infinitive. You guys been showing this, you know, like how much skills in like in like forty minutes, you know, you can do it. Guys, if we're gonna leave you with something, it's just you know, when we're, when you know when we're developing your guards, remember that have have the option to oh, so recycle, nice. recycle within your guards. She likes the sun. Yeah, with you know have the option because it becomes frustrating. You know, you have a really good De La Hiva, right, and then. Um, yeah, that's for our kids. That's one of our rules. Oh, I can't, I can't read it. It's like backwards. But, yeah. no, we can read it. We can read it. It's beautiful. I love it. So if they say this word during class, you got you to gotta give me 10 push-ups. But look, so just before we finish up, it's just frustrating for the top player. So if I'm here, I have my lasso, right? He tries to circle his hand out here. Okay. Go into a De La Hiva. If he tries to push, maybe we sit up, play a little bit of sit-up guard, right? But it's all just, you know, adding so many, all those steps and, and just making it complicated for them to pass. So that way they're, they're not just passing your lasso guard, they're passing your lasso, they're passing your De La Hiva, they're passing your sit-up guard. They're going to have to deal with all those weapons before they manage to get to your side control, before they can, you know, advance their position. So if, if we leave you with something, it's... Be, be comfortable moving around within your guards and be comfortable with, you know, developing. Experiment. Yeah, experimenting with different types of guards too. Perfect.
I, I kind of took a, a lot of selfishness today and I kept asking you specific questions for me and for my students in particular, but I appreciate you guys a lot, man. The, uh, my students, if you guys, you guys may or may not have met Rennie, I think uh, Nacho's met Rennie, but uh, Josh is coming out, both you guys, I hope you guys are able to make it out here and, and to Michigan. You guys are amazing. I, I miss you guys a lot. And thank you so much for everything. I'll see you guys more. Miss you guys too. And everybody stay safe. You know, we're going to get to you soon. Yes. See you guys. Everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night, guys.